Hey guys, Justin Baker here with Team Salt Life. Just had an awesome day. Right out here in Stewart, Florida, fishing with Captain Cole, literally came out of that inlet right there and ended up fishing right out here out front. Just to have one of those days, I don't know, pressure, raininess coming, the fish just wouldn't bite. And we decided, you know, we got some spear guns on the boat. Let's see what happens. We'll dive some of these kind of artificial reef wrecks around here and just kind of see what's down there. Captain Cole pulled us over to the top of one that just, he was like, man, this looks nuts. There's fish all over. He's like, tell me what's down there. We were in about 55 feet of water, I think. Pulled over to the top of this wreck and went down and kind of just some bait fish, school of spade fish, couple Goliath grouper on the top. Didn't really see anything on that dive. Um, there was a bit of the wreck that was behind me that I really didn't get to hit, you know? 55 feet, I only, got, I only got so much time. So back to the surface and uh, just did a little more breathing. Next dive, kind of just figured out where the back part of that structure was and found these big old gigantic um, kind of concrete culverts. And as I was coming into the culverts, I noticed this grouper just kind of roll over the top, turned around and looked straight up at me like, do you want to be friends? It was an easy shot, which I love, but it was pretty sweet. Just drug this fish to the surface, bled him out and uh, hollered for the boat. Everybody's pretty stoked, you know, to see a fish, you know, like a good fish come on after it's just been kind of a rough day. So we get back to the dock and you know we're gonna show you guys kind of a little quick tutorial on how to clean fish. Well, now's the not as fun part of shooting the fish. Now comes the dirty cleaning it up part. So we're just gonna, I like to start fish facing me on this side. Usually find this nice little piece of the head bone right here, not where this whole blowout was where he kind of blew a hole in the fish. Strokes up here towards that head bone. Make a couple slices down the rib cage right here just to get started. And then try to find the backbone piece here. Keep the knife as flat as possible. Kind of towards the backbone. Sometimes you can feel it if you have the right knife. And you start trying to drag the knife on the top of the bones. Here. You kind of want to always keep your knife angled down so that you can hit those bones. If you kind of keep it flat, sometimes you run out over the meat and leave like a whole bunch of meat. I've done it plenty of times, it happens. And come out to the tail, poke to where I feel there's a big center bone, the backbone that runs down. Try to pop the knife over the top right there and then just if you cut this whole side off, then you have this weird shaped fish kind of just like kind of laying all funny to cut the other side. So if you turn it over now and then make those same cuts on this side, it, the fish lays a little flatter. And if you lay the fish a little flatter with that other side still on, then it's kind of easier to clean this side. So that's just how I was taught to do it. So I've kind of stuck with that ever since I was a little kid. We're doing the same thing on this side. Try to keep knife pointed down, find the backbone. Knife as close to the back as we can here without running over it. Same thing, get to the tail. Pop the thing through the back. So we got a little damage here because we caught this guy by the shoot it method and kind of blew a big old hole right here. So this is like easier sometimes if it hasn't been shot, but not too bad, didn't damage too much meat. And 
just kind of run this down the backbone part. And then right around here, you're gonna run into some ribs. Depending on how prominent they are, you either break them with a knife or cut over them. It just kind of depends on how my knife falls. You either trim them out after or clean them over the top. When you get to this backbone right here, I kind of just try to hold this meat over and then cut down again onto the top of the bones. Oh. Nice big old fat piece of grouper. Really important when you got your thumb hanging down there not to chop it off. <laughs> Good I've advice. I've nicked mine every once. Every, every so often when you're not paying attention. These rib cage bones in here. You just kind of slide the knife over the top of them as best you can. Done. Done with getting the meat off. So we're all done. Got it pretty close to the bone. Left a little meat in there. This is rib cage bone. Some people can cut these off and cook them. Missed. Sometimes when you miss a little meat, you can try to trim it back out. Missed a little here because this, where the fish got shot, it's kind of hard to run a dull knife in there, but you do miss a nugget piece. You can always just surgically remove it. Be a good little fried grouper nugget. So now we're just gonna take the skin off because you can't really eat the skin. I'm just gonna try to hold on to this. And process to get started here. A little hole in the fillet here so you can stick your finger through it and hold on to it and then you can kind of walk your knife back and forth like this push 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 again the whole trick is to try to not cut through the skin so you just leave it you leave your knife at a certain angle not too down like this or you'll cut through the skin you kind of want to leave it nice and flat This is that shot part up here, so it's be a little hard maybe to get off. Let's see. Skin, the eating stuff. Something really important that a lot of people, there's arguments back and forth, oh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Don't put fresh water on your fish. Either bring in a bucket from the ocean to wash your fillets off or whatever, or you know, like a nice spot like Captain Cole's got, just right off the dock after you're done cleaning, you can rinse the fillets off nice and good. Just don't use fresh water. There's chlorine, you know, kind of additives in there. It kind of starts to cook the fish in a chemical process. Do not use fresh water. Use the seawater. That's what it's there for and it'll make your fish taste way better in the end too. Hey everybody, welcome to our humble abode. We're gonna do a little catch and cook. We already did the catching. Already done the grouper we got the other day. Time to enjoy. So we're gonna do some blackened fish sandwiches. Super simple recipe, which is I like, because I'm kind of simple with doing things. I want the fish to do the talking. Stacy came up with this awesome way to do it and we love it. So we're gonna bring it to you. All right, so first thing is the buns. We're big fans of brioche buns. And then I make a homemade tartar sauce. Pretty much mayonnaise, relish, and fresh dill, and squeeze of lemon juice. So simple and easy, but it makes the fish sandwich just perfect. We use Badia Seafood Creole Blend. Pretty good stuff. Um, put a piece of lettuce on the bun, and that's really it. We kind of you know, want to taste the fish more 
in this whole deal. So we're gonna cover it up with everything else. So we're gonna start with about like two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna melt that in the bottom of the cast iron skillet just to get the fish kind of going and getting nice and coated. Blackened style, I like to use butter because butter makes it better. We keep the skillet at about a medium heat. So on a scale of one to 10, we're about a five right now. Keep it at about a five, because any higher than that, you kind of scorch the butter. We don't want that happen. Now that we got a good coat of butter going here in the pan, kind of sizzling, not burning, we'll just take a piece of fish in here and Boom. Okay. Yum. We're gonna do about three minutes on each side and then we'll be good to go. So it's been about three minutes, maybe a little less. Time to flip the fish. The way you kind of know is you'll see the white here on the sides of the fish starting to come up. It's still clear on the top, but the white is starting to come up on the sides. So, give it a little flip. The trick with fish is not overcooking it. The overcooking is kind of dry. About three minutes each side on those fillets, but you know, it's about maybe a half inch thick. So fish, don't overdo it. Mm. Mm. All right guys, here you have it. Our fish sandwiches with our homemade tartar sauce. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys try out our recipe and let us know how you like it. See you next time. Bye.